Hey, what's going on everyone? Brian here. It's probably no shock to anyone who watches the channel that I'm a pretty big fan of Astro, but can I tell you, they really blew my mind the other day. I got to interview the incomparable Matt Kane from Astro and talk about their new content layer API. I worked with them to make a high graph content loader and we were really meant to go over that then, uh, but we'd already been talking for maybe like half an hour on stream and I'd, I'd learned a lot. We'd had some really great discussions and then Matt just up and dropped this bomb on me. The example I was giving before about being able to transform to a, a common format, if the uh, schema that the user has defined inside your loader at that point includes a transform, that data that you're putting in the store there is already transformed. So when they're querying it, it is already in the right format that they need. Now, at a surface level, this might not seem like much, but the implications really sank in, and I knew I had to create a proof of concept around it. What this little aside means is that I can swap out my data layer almost at a moment's notice. Maybe, maybe you're switching CMSs or you're going from Markdown into a database. It doesn't really matter. If you're using this content layer and setting a schema with Zod, you can swap out the data and not even worry about the shape getting out of whack with the data for your templates. Now, let's talk about a concrete example of this. All right, so here I have uh, the kind of default build that you get while using the, the, the Astro blog template. I just ran uh, npm create Astro and selected the blog template for this. It comes with its own content. The content is inside this blog directory inside of the content area. Uh, and it comes running uh, the latest stable version of Astro. So the other thing I did to prep for this is to run it and upgrade to the uh, 5.0 beta. Uh, once 5.0 comes out, this will be default functionality. But until then, to make it the easiest, 5.0 beta is the way to go. It is super stable, so I would say go ahead and start trying this out uh, today. But you can see I've got this, this uh, set of content here, a whole bunch of posts, and they're all gonna be these markdown files inside of my blog directory. They all have a little bit of information in their front matter, uh, but I want to add this into a CMS. Uh, so in order to do this, I'm going to ignore all this blog content. In fact, uh, let's just get rid of it all the way move that to the trash and you can see all the content over here goes away in the background. And let's take a look at how this is being brought in. This is being brought in via the old methodology currently uh, with, the, with the content layer. Uh, we're gonna upgrade this to be the, uh, the new functionality going forward. So the first thing that I need to do is I actually want to get the high graph loader for this. It's a loader that I made, as I mentioned in the intro, alongside the Astro team. Uh, it was actually relatively simple to put together. I really enjoyed the process of doing it. So let's install that right now. NPM install at high graph, high graph Astro loader. So what that's going to do is it's going to give us some new functionality that we can utilize and make setting up this a configuration and not a whole bunch of fetch requests. Uh, so now that that's installed, I'm going to actually add that as an import to the top of my config.ts file here. And then we're going to convert this define collection call over to the high graph loader. So it's no longer gonna have a type of content. Let's have some room to work here. Uh, I'm going to define out a new loader and it's going to be the high graph loader. And that takes a set of options. And just for simplicity, I'm gonna paste them in and then we're gonna talk about them one at a time. So we have an endpoint. The endpoint is going to be the high graph endpoints, the API endpoint. And in this version, I'm using a public API and not a, uh, a tokenized API, a private API. Although there is a, uh, a token property that you can pass in. I'm going to define out what rich text I want to use for my content. In this case, I have a rich text field called content. The operation that I want to use is to get my blog posts. So there's a posts model that I'm going to use. And then here is the, the fields that I want to fetch from that. Uh, this is still a beta integration, so feel free to leave any comments or issues on the GitHub repository and let me know how you're enjoying it. So this is going to be how we get our data. And then we need to worry about our Zod schema. Our Zod schema is actually looking for the old data, so we're going to have to adjust that. But I also know that I want to transform this. And what uh, Matt was talking about in that, in that snippet from the video was the idea that Zod has a transform method on it and it can take all the data and transform it into another type of data. Uh, so in this case, I wanna return back all the data anyway, so I'm gonna spread that. Uh, and then I want to have a few other pieces uh, to refactor it basically. And hopefully I get 
all of my closing brackets there. All right, so we know that we need to have a title, a description, a pub date, uh, potentially an updated date, and potentially a hero image. But they're not all called that in the API that I'm using. And that's where this is going to come in very, very handy. So let's take a look at what we were getting again. We know we have a title, but we also know that the description isn't called description art. So let's get rid of title. We're not gonna need that. And we want the description to actually be the data.excerpt. And then the pub date, we don't have a pub date uh, in HiGraph. We have the date object here. So the pub date is instead going to be a new date object with data.date. And let's make sure that's correct. Yeah, data.date. And then updated date, I'm actually going to ignore that for now. Let's not worry about it. And then hero image is actually going to be the cover image with the URL. So let's grab that. Hero image is going to be data.coverimage, oops, coverimage.url. And let's see if we need anything else. I think that's going to be it. And that means that we can go ahead and change out our Zod schema. You can see this is actually complaining because we haven't changed things up here. So we've got uh, a title coming in. We've got an excerpt coming in. We've got the date coming in. No updated date anymore. And we have a, what was this called? Cover image coming in. Cover image, which is technically uh, an object with a URL. So instead of a string, this is going to be an object that has a URL, which is a Zod string. All right, I think that's all good. So now we can save that in. We're going to need to restart our server. And it looks like we've got some sort of formatting issue here. Probably got a little too happy with all my closing. So let's take a look. We come out. Here's that. We take a parentheses for that. And then we need another parentheses. That's correct. And yeah, I guess that is right now. So let's save that. Let's rerun npm run dev and see if we get any errors. All right, so the issue we have here is that we did not pass in a couple things that we need to that Zod is expecting here. So we do need to get, we are getting the uh, content HTML. We need to define that. And we also need to define the ID. We are getting an ID and we are going to need that. Uh, so we'll say our content is coming in as a z.object and that object has an HTML string inside of it. And then we also need our ID and that's gonna come through as a string as well. Let's make sure we add the comma there. So then, when we rerun our server, we have content. And as it turns out, we have the two blog posts coming in. You can see we do get that notification. Uh, let's see, where is that? Finish loading uh, posts with two items. Uh, so we still have an issue here that we're getting undefined here. And this is one small issue with converting an old markdown method into this new kind of direction. And that is that we used to have the idea of a slug on this object, and now we don't. So we need to actually go in and update that. So I'm gonna go into my pages, I'm gonna go into blog and index, and then in this file, instead of going to just the slug, we're gonna go to the anchor of post.data Dot slug. So you'll also notice in all this that we're also missing the slug from our Zod schema. So we can actually come in, we can add a slug to that schema, and we'll call that another Z string. All the data has to go through Zod. It's how we're type checking it, it's how we're doing this transform, it has to be rendered through Zod at this point. So now when we look, we do have those URLs. They are still not found because we need to go in and adjust our slug route as well. So you can see here, we've got this, this same idea happening where post needs to have data.slug. Uh, and then we need to change, we're gonna to need to change up the way that our content is being rendered. But this should give us a matching route. And you can see we now have this post.render. And again, this is all moving from the old way of, of doing things to the new way. So instead of getting the post from the props, what we actually wanna do is use a couple new things from the Astro content uh, module. So we're gonna import get entry, and we also need render off of the Astro content module. So instead of running this and getting it off Astro props, and in fact, I should go back and change this, but we're trying to change as little as possible. What I can do is I can actually run the get entry. So we'll await get entry. 
and then we need to pass it the collection that we're looking into. So in this case, it is blog, I believe. And then the ID of the entry. So props.id. So that's going to give us the post on this. And then instead of awaiting the post.render, what we're going to do is we're going to render from the post. And then here's all of our content. But the nice thing about this is this date, this image, and a few other pieces other than the rich text, they're not coming from this template. They're coming from our blog post layout, which has a whole bunch of different variables being called throughout that I don't need to go and manually update now. So if I need to change this to run in Markdown or another headless CMS or whatever I need, all I need to do is do the transformation layer. I can grab all of the, the data from that whether I'm using a, a, a default loader like the high graph loader or I'm writing my own. And then I transform that data to be the correct data inside of my templates via this little transform layer here. Now this is, I think, a really slick way of doing it. And I think that in the future, when we're not thinking about converting from old to new methodology here, we can actually use this to create templates that are agnostic to the data layer and allow you to bring data in and transform it for use with those layouts and not have to go through and painstakingly change every layout to have exactly what we need. We can do the transform all in the loader. And that's really it for now. Uh, what, what you can do with this, I would highly recommend you go check out the Astro 5.0 beta. I'll post a link down in the description to that, as well as to the high graph uh, content loader that I've been working with here. We have a few different helper methods in there that make things much easier to get around. Uh, and also I'd say any data source that you want to play with, writing the loader wasn't a whole lot of work actually. Figuring out that maybe the best UX and DX uh, for our loader was where I spent most of my time. Really the actual coding was maybe an hour's worth of work to make this loader. So I'd highly encourage you to try to make your own loader with any data source that you personally need. Uh, so yeah, I would hit up uh, the Astro team in the Discord uh, for Astro or come hang out and talk more uh, in the comments below and ask me any questions you've got. Thanks for watching y'all.